Welcome back to Archery Buzz, and you may notice I sound a bit different today, and that's because we've got a slightly different video for you. Recently I got myself a brand new riser, and we're going to show you how to set that up in today's video. So we're going to go straight into setting the poundage uh, bolts, and making sure that they're at an even level on both top and bottom. Yeah, so what this does is it gives us a good starting point for the tiller that we'll then go into a bit more later on in the video. And here you can see me putting on the clicker plate. It just allows me to have the clicker a bit further out. So my arrows are a little bit longer to soften them up. Got a bit of a big point on there to help soften them up again. And that, that gives me that bit of extra clicker length. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking off the bolt that comes with the riser. So I'm going to throw the clicker plate on and then pop the bolt back through it. Um, what this does is it allows me to push the clicker out a bit. So I've got a bit of a longer arrow and a bit of a longer point on my arrow to help soften it all off. This means I can push out the clicker that little bit more so that I so I can accommodate for that So it arrow. gives you a little bit more adjustment room when it comes to using your clicker. Yeah, that's exactly it. If, if you want to know more about softening arrows and stuff, check back at one of our previous videos called Arrow Selection. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to um, tiller. Um, so we'll have to put the limbs in for the first time and just clicking them into place, um, making sure we've got the right limb in the right limb pocket. Yeah, that's good. exactly it. So here we've got the uh, me measuring the tiller for the first time. I think, if I remember correctly, we've got about a 3 mil bigger gap on the top. So you can see that, that distance between the thumb and the string is a little bit bigger. And that, that was about three millimeters. So to counter that, we're going to be taking the top limb bolt out by two turns, which should make the uh, the top limb soft, um, weaker, making the distance shorter. Yeah. So we'll do a more in-depth video on this later on, but for the short term, tiller is purely us adjusting how the power within each limb so that it's got even use and then we'll propel the arrow out in a much better fashion. So to adjust these quickly there's a locking nut in the back of the riser so we've got to undo that then we can change where the limb bolt is and then do it back up and that's purely it then you're set to go you can throw the limbs back in and string up the bow again. So it's just yeah stringing the bow up um, so talk us through why you've gone for a 27 inch riser. So before you can actually see my old riser in the back of the video, the blue one, I was on a 68 inch bow with that. It's 25 inch riser, medium limbs, 68 inch bow. What I've got here is a 27 inch riser with the medium limb still, so it gives me a 70 inch bow. What this does is it makes it a little bit more forgiving and also the longer riser makes the limbs a little bit lighter. Here just checking the string is on nicely and then we're gonna make sure the limbs are set in place nicely. So just making sure they're settled, yeah. This is the first time you've ever drawn that bow. Yeah. A special moment for all of us. It is very much so. Mm. And then measuring them again, making sure they're just right. It, I don't normally measure my so this is just checking over, making sure that the measurement is even on both top and bottom, which is good. Yeah. So here we are now with the arrow rest, and it's brand new riser, so we've got to put one on there. So here what I've got is the arrow rest itself, plus my two buttons. We've got um, what I call a mock-up button. This is one that I'd usually test things on or and used to put arrow rests on bows. And then my actual competition riser, my everyday button. And that's the button that I use all the time. So um, what what button, what rest is that that you're unpackaging now? So it's a Shibuya arrow rest, and to go with it, my mock-up button is also a Shibuya. This means that the hole in the arrow rest is the exact same size as the button, so it should give me a nice guide onto the riser so it's perfect fit and it's exactly where it should be okay that's brilliant so you're using the bracing height gauge and the reference button uh the uh the, yeah the the mock-up button as two reference points 
um, to make sure that you're, you're putting the, the rest in the right position. Yeah, so I'm about to ga- grab the bracing height gauge back again, and what that will do is give us a nice straight flat line across the riser, which means I get the arrow rest on nice and straight so it's on there perfectly. And we could only do this now because we needed to set the tiller first, otherwise you'd have the arrow rest pointing up or down a little bit. So it's definitely following uh, a set of... Um stages set, yeah, stages um to set in bows up to to make it more efficient and making sure that you, you're doing it correctly yeah so one thing to make sure you do is practice putting on the uh, arrow rest now i only need to do this once i used to work in an archery shop i was doing them all the time but you might just make sure you know what you're doing do it a couple of times make sure you're comfortable with doing it because you only actually get one go at doing this in the end so there we go, on the bow now, taking off the bracing height gauge and now it's just the point of applying pressure to make sure it's stuck nicely. So what you're going to go ahead and do is take out the, the button and then be able to apply a lot more pressure um, to make sure that you've got a, a nice and secure adhesion between both the rest and the riser. So that's, that makes it nice and solid and make sure it doesn't come off at any point in its uh, in its however long it'll stay on the riser yeah you got to remember it's going to have arrows flying through it at many feet per second very quickly a lot of force goes through it yeah so here we go on with my everyday button now and which is a biter isn't it yeah it's a biter button i really like it it's easy to adjust and great pressure even pressure for the arrow so next we'll be moving on to the clicker so, so we've mentioned clickers before, but the uh, the clicker is. Uh, talk us through what a clicker is, Tom. So a clicker is just a thin piece of metal that you send your arrow through. So your arrow is actually pulling it away from the riser, and your arrow will go all the way through it, and it'll snap back towards the riser. What it does is it provides me with an audible sound, I guess you could say, to help me release the bone naturally. I don't actually hear it done many hours of practice and that builds up lots of muscle memory and that provides me with a nice natural release and and a timing of when to release so an interesting thing you might be able to see here is that instead of using the thumb spur which is uh, provided with the the clicker he's using he's actually using the bolt that comes with the riser so talk us through why you're doing that tom so there's two methods with a clicker really uh, i see I'm the kind of guy that's very stubborn and I won't move my clicker around at all and there there are others that move it around maybe a mill or two every day so it's always comfortable for them. Because I'm stubborn what I'll do is I'll use the little bolt that comes with it on the riser and I can do that up really tightly so it doesn't move. The one that usually comes with the button itself you can move around with your hand a bit easier. Okay, so we've moved on from the clicker and we're going to move straight into putting the sight block on uh, onto the riser. Um, so the sight block is the the main interface between the sight and the riser. So it needs to be a nice and secure platform for it to to sit onto. And that platform needs to be secured onto the riser. And there's only two bolts that make um, the contact. Um, and you've got to make sure that they're both done up nice and evenly and both tightly. Um, so if you initially put uh, a, put them in loosely and not tighten them up to, to the maximum, um, you can then go in and evenly tighten them up so that it's not sitting uh, with a lot of pressure on one side and it loose on the other. Um, if that is the case, uh, it would eventually uh, loosen off and you would get some play within the sight block area. So, yeah. Play within the sight block area is a very bad thing. But moving on, we have now got my grip. is something that goes onto the riser and is going to be very personal for everyone. What I like to do is change mine a little bit and put this material on it called Sugru. And what this does is it lowers down my hand a little bit. And on the riser there's a very nice edge. And that just makes more efficient use of that and it more pronounced feel within the palm of my hand. And from there, it just gives me that nice feel that I like. Side benefit is that it means my hand doesn't slide up as badly as it would do in the rain. 
So sugar is a material which is like Play-Doh to apply, but then after 24 hours of, of drying at room temperature, it sets to uh, a solid rubber with, uh, of course, that rubber uh, rubberized finish on the outside. Um, so it's essentially perfect for making uh, grip um, grip fillers, um, making it perfect for archery, essentially. That's exactly it. So here I'm just, once I've got it on the main bulk of it, just being really careful here to not have any excess sugar on it. I don't want anything that will interrupt where the bow wants to go or do when it's leaving my hand. And also, but at the same time, I, I want it to still be comfortable on my hand. So just making sure there's no excess, but it's still very nice and smooth. Hmm. And yeah, again, making it sure making sure that it's uh, nice and smooth so it sets in the right position and shape. So here we go. The last thing that we do, my, although my V-bar has magically appeared on the bow, that's purely a bolt in the front. And we've got a little spacer that goes in there and then two bolts on either side that hold the grip onto the riser. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a comment down below as to why you enjoyed it, what you liked about it, what maybe you'd do differently if you set up your own riser. And be sure to give us a like and subscribe on the video. Also, there are links in the description below of the stuff that we used in this video. So there'll be Sugru links and bits like that. And at the same time, there'll also be links to our Facebook and Twitter where you can keep up to date with what we're doing and what we've got in the future for you. So as previously mentioned, we'll be doing some videos on tiller adjustment and also we'll be looking at bracing height and bracing length. So look forward to uh, those videos coming out and stay tuned.